Hi, this is Cycle 2, Week 1 Science. In just a moment, we're going to uh, jump in and talk about Van Cleve's experiment number 2, Shaded. Uh, but before we do that, I, I want to make just a, pers a couple of personal uh, comments. First, I, I want to say thank you. Uh, through on the YouTube channel and in the uh, Facebook CC Tutors group and in other ways we have received a lot of encouragement and a lot of support uh, for these videos. Thank you so much. It makes us so happy to, to know that these videos uh, are helpful uh, and that they're helpful to you. Uh, that I love science and I love doing it uh, and that's, that's why we're making these, these videos. Uh, second, I want to remind you of the purpose uh, which kind of relates to the, f the first point. There, there's no one right way to do science. There, there's no one right way to do science at all. Um, science is often messy. It often doesn't go uh, as we plan, and sometimes that happens during community day, during your CC uh, science strand. Sometimes that happens um, there too. The, uh, it, it's very, very rare for a great scientific discovery uh, to go exactly as planned. Uh, almost never does a scientist uh, design an experiment, set it up, run the experiment, look at the data, and then say, Yes, that is exactly what I thought was going to happen. Uh, Nobel Prize, here I come. That doesn't happen very much at all. Usually what happens is the scientist sets up the experiment and designs it and collects all of the data and then is looking at the data and says, huh, that's weird. And then uh, that, that, that curiosity gets going and that's what leads to, um, to whole new worlds. Sometimes whole new places of knowledge are, are uncovered in that way. And so in your, in your uh, tutor rooms, as you're working with your students, sometimes the, the experiments don't go uh, the way they should. That's okay. Ask good questions. Help your students understand why. N uh, never let your students lose that curiosity. Don't you yourself lose that curiosity. Science is all about understanding how God's creation works. Uh, and, and that's the other thing that I want to remind you of. Um, God created this, this world, this amazing world, uh, and, and we have this great opportunity to study it with science. And here in the CC strand of science, we have this great opportunity to do these things with our own hands, to get in there uh, and be messy and, and have fun uh, and learn a lot. Uh, and so never is that any easier. That, that's true for all science, but it's never any easier than when you're studying something like the heavens and the astronomical bodies as we are uh, in this cycle. This is wonderful stuff that captures the imagination of every child uh, and science brings out uh, in each of us uh, that inner child. Uh, that's the reason I became a scientist was I never actually uh, grew up. <laughs> okay, so now Van Cleve's experiment number two shaded. The purpose of this experiment is to show uh, how the surface of different planets could have vastly different temperatures. In order to do that you need a couple of things. You need two thermometers. You need two thermometers and you need to be outside so that you have an area that's both shaded and an area that is in direct sunlight. And so what we're going to do then is we're going to position one of the two thermometers, uh, we're going to keep one in the shade, and we're going to position one in the, the direct sunlight. So I'm going to walk over here and put this thermometer, which is right now reading just under 90 degrees, we're going to put it into the direct sunlight. Our other, our other thermometer stays right here. Uh, as you're doing this experiment, uh, it's important that um, you take an opportunity to, to explain how the thermometer works. Remind your student that this is a scientific instrument. It's a scientific instrument that measures temperature. The way a thermometer actually works is um, that as the energy is being transferred into the liquid, then the, the liquid changes. So as the temperature rises, more energy is being transferred into the liquid, which means that the molecules of the liquid are expanding. And so there's, in, in the way this thermometer is designed, there's only one place for it to go. It rises up the tube, right? And so that is how a thermometer actually works. So right now this thermometer is reading then the temperature of the air molecules, the air molecules that are colliding with it. And again, it's reading just about 82 degrees. Um, so uh, as a practical demonstration, especially for the younger students, I suggest that you get a cup of hot water. You don't need it to be boiling, you don't want it uh, to be boiling, but you want to take a cup of hot water and just show the students that the air temperature is 80 degrees, but now I'm going to put the bulb of the thermometer, submerse it in the water, and now we watch as that liquid rises. The liquid is rising because the temperature is changing, right? Because the temperature of that water is greater than the temperature of the air out here, and, and so the temperature 
uh, then that the thermometer reads begins to change. This is a good week to point out that there are many different temperature scales that we use uh, in order to measure temperature. Here in North America, we primarily use the Fahrenheit temperature scale. Uh, the scientific temperature scale is the Celsius scale, and that's the, the scale that is used uh, throughout most of the world. Uh, and when we're looking at um, astronomical phenomenon, we're uh, typically talking about the Kelvin temperature scale. So there are many different kinds of temperature scales. The important thing for our students to understand is that fact, and that each one measures uh, temperature. And so there are equivalent physical points on each scale. For example, the temperature at which water freezes. Water freezing is a physical event. On the Celsius scale, it happens at zero Celsius. On the Fahrenheit scale, it happens at 32 Fahrenheit. Similarly, water boils. That's a physical phenomenon. On the Celsius scale, water boils at 100 degrees Celsius. On the Fahrenheit scale, water boils at 212 degrees Fahrenheit. But they, so they're different numbers, different places on the scale, but they, they, are, they represent the same physical e event. And so, um, those are important points to make, especially with some of your older students. So now, we've, we've had that thermometer sitting in the direct sunlight for just a couple of minutes. Depending on where you are, you, you may need to leave that thermometer sitting in the direct sunlight for longer. I, I think 10 minutes is more than sufficient. Uh, and I think here today that we'll be able to see a difference. So what we're going to do then in this experiment, again, is talk about why the surfaces of different planets can have different temperatures. And so we have one, um, thermometer that's exposed to sunlight and all of that direct energy, we have another that's been kept in the shade. So after the water um, experiment and the temperature has now uh, dropped back down to about 80 degrees again, just as it was before. So I'm going to take this thermometer and keep it in the shade and I'm going to go over now uh, and, and read the thermometer over there uh, as well. So I'm being very careful to stay in the shade. temperature of that thermometer has dropped slightly. It's reading 77 degrees Fahrenheit. Now I'm going to, you have to be careful when you're looking at the thermometer that's in the direct sunlight that you don't cast a shadow on the bulb. So I'm going to move around very carefully <laughs> so that I can get over here and read this, this temperature. There's nearly a 30 degree difference. This thermometer is reading a temperature of, of, of just over 100 degrees Fahrenheit after sitting in the direct sunlight for just a few minutes. So, with that very practical demonstration then, we want to, to talk to our students and ask them and give them the fact. The surfaces of some planets are very, very different. The surface of Mercury is very, very different than the surface of the Earth in terms of temperature. And why? ask that question. This experiment illustrates to us that the reason those, those two planets, for example, have very different temperatures at their surface uh, is, is because one is exposed to much more energy. Mercury is much closer to the sun and it has no atmosphere uh, to speak of. And so almost all of that thermal energy, if we were able to take our thermometer and put it there, uh, it would be exposed to it if it could survive it, in fact, and, and it would read, uh, read that temperature. Whereas here on Earth, we have this atmosphere that God created that shelters us from a lot of the harmful rays of the sun that shelters us, in fact, from a lot of the energy uh, directly out of the sun that allows this life as we know it um, to exist. A very practical illustration. Uh, this week's experiment, very easy to do, very easy to understand. Um, this is cycle two, week one, Van Cleve's experiment number two, shaded.